hope you understand what is water of crystallization as we have seen uh, five water molecules associated with uh, crystallities of copper sulfate. Now, moving further in this experiment, if you see, you have already dissolved copper sulfate uh, into water to form copper sulfate solution which is blue in color in the test tube. Now if you draw some pieces of iron, say nails, iron nails into it, then since iron is highly reactive or more reactive than copper, it will displace copper from copper sulfate solution which means iron is displacing copper from its own solution to form iron sulfate FeSO4 and copper being deposited at the bottom. Now you see iron has been able to displace copper from its own solution copper sulfate only because iron is more reactive than copper. So if we talk about reactivity, uh, apart from what we are actually seeing in this experiment or in this activity, in this reaction, see uh, if you, you know, metals are found in uh, earth's crust and if you are doing uh, mining or if you see mining uh, is being done to extract uh, metal ores from the earth's surface, you see there are many metals which are present in combined state below the earth's surface. For example, if you want to uh, you know have iron from uh, below the earth's surface you will not find iron in pure form of iron but iron in form of iron oxide which is called as ore it is found it is found in a combined state fe2o3 i mean there are many ores of iron like hematite magnetite and limonite but the main point is since iron is reactive it is found in a combined state iron ore Whereas, whereas there are a uh, few metals like gold and silver which are found in native state. Why? Because they are least reactive, they are very less reactive metals. So it means there should be a reactivity series for metals and those metals which lie above the reactivity series will always displace a metal from its own solution lying below that particular reactive metal. It means suppose iron is above, suppose why suppose actually it is above copper iron is above copper in reactivity series which means iron will always displace copper from its own solution i mean a solution of copper like copper sulfate we have seen in this experiment also if you, if you uh, see zinc lead these are also reactive metals and uh, more reactive than copper and it will displace copper from its own solution so this type of displacement where a uh, particular metal displaces uh, the other less reactive metal from its own solution is also known as displacement reaction. Now if you see in this uh, reaction copper sulfate was originally blue in color whereas now it will turn into pale green color. Why? Because FeSO4 has been found and iron ha has displaced copper from its own solution copper sulfate. Right? Now we will talk about rusting of iron. Uh, friends you remember uh, moments ago I have described a small uh, story about aluminium and iron, why aluminium uh, utensils have vanished from our uh, kitchen and households. Uh, I have also described if you go to a museum uh, where you know utensils uh, where in which the food was cooked for different different uh, warriors like Shivaji and Rana Pratap. Those utensils were either made of aluminium or copper mainly but not of iron. Why? Because and those are preserved. I mean, in, if you go to the museum, you see those utensils are still, uh, you know, preserved. Can be seen there in the museum. Why? Because aluminium also uh, reacts with air to form aluminium oxide. But aluminium oxide is sticky and sticks to the parent metal and prevents the parent metal to corrode further. Similarly, with uh, lead also and copper also. But we'll talk mainly about uh, aluminium and copper because uh, those are most widely used. Uh, metals uh, which we see in our day to day life, particularly in households. Now, if we talk about rusting of iron, what is rusting and what is corrosion? Let us understand first that. See, whenever metal comes uh, in contact with humid environment like uh, oxygen and uh, water, they always form metal oxides. Now, when a metal form metal oxide, the process is called as corrosion. But when iron forms iron oxide when comes into contact with oxygen, that then that particular corrosion is also called as rusting of iron. Now originally iron is you know grey black in color but when it forms iron, iron oxide it forms a reddish brown powdery form of stuff. 
you have you might have seen you know on the iron rods which have been kept from years on uh, windows of uh, very old buildings or anywhere in the uh, environment or society you see it will form a you know uh, type of rusty material i mean powdery material on the outer surface that powdery material is called as iron oxide or the rust of iron that is reddish brown in color earlier when that particular grill or that particular rod of iron was uh, fit there it was actually gray black in color but now it has turned into a reddish brown color that is actually iron oxide so it means when iron comes into contact with oxygen or humid environment it forms iron oxide which is also called as rusting of iron it is also uh, it is also a type of corrosion but corrosion word is actually used when metals form metal oxides when it comes into contact with oxygen or humid environment for iron we use the word rusting now how to prevent this rusting of uh, iron because this rusting causes heavy losses why you have to replace the metal again and again there are few processes which can prevent rusting of iron for example uh, one of the common seen uh, process is painting you might have seen if you have grills on your window those are made of iron rods different you know cuboidal form long cuboidal form of irons and black paint or different other other color type of paints are applied on it why that paint prevents the iron to come in contact with the humid environment which means to come in contact with the oxygen or moisture present in the environment it will prevent iron to get corroded or rusted and will not deteriorate or eat the rod itself or the parent uh, iron metal itself it will if it will form iron oxide it will start to deteriorate or will eat the parent metal itself so it will be a loss to prevent that loss the first process is applying paint also you might have seen in industries or in uh, vehicles apart from the, uh, the lubrication process grease is also applied on the metal surface iron surface why because that grease also do not allow to iron to come in contact with the oxygen or the humid environment or the moisture present in environment and prevent the rusting of iron the third process how to prevent rusting of iron is galvanization now let us understand what is galvanization galvanization is a process where a less reactive metal or a metal having very low reactivity is is coated or placed above that iron rod or iron uh, body for example if you see ships uh, in oceans you know in ocean is ocean water is highly corrosive it corrodes iron metal very quickly so if you see ships in uh, sea or uh, ocean you might see that uh, on the edge or on the surface of that iron uh, another metal is coated that metal is generally zinc why zinc is very less reactive metal so if you coat zinc over that body of iron it will not allow the iron to come in contact with sea water or oxygen or uh, moisture present in the environment and it will prevent that iron to get corroded and it will prevent from heavy losses why if your metal get destroyed obviously you will have or heavy losses you will have to again replace that metal with uh, another uh, iron uh, substance or iron metal so that galvanization is actually coating of a less reactive metal or a metal having low reactivity over iron body because since the uh, metal used for coating is less reactive or is having low reactivity it will take time to get corroded itself so if it will take time iron the iron body inside that coated material will have a longer life so this is galvanization now let us talk about crystallization what is crystallization let us understand what is the process of crystallization friends if you travel around coastal areas you might have seen you know bulk of white heaps uh, kept below uh, on the earth surface uh, beside sea water that heaps that white heaps are actually salt common salt not eatable i mean they are not processed to eat but still they are common salt now friends that common salt is actually very tiny crystals of uh, nacl if you if you heat a particular amount of sea water very tiny crystals of nacl is formed right okay? 
but if you dissolve that tiny crystal small amount of tiny crystal into a saturated solution of that same salt if you dissolve the same small amount of that tiny crystals of nacl into a saturated solution of nacl itself then big crystals forms out this process is called as crystallization formation of big crystals of salts coming out from the saturated solution when a small amount of that particular salt has been dissolved in it is called crystallization so i hope you have seen uh, you know different type of reaction the first reaction we have seen was the reaction between vinegar and baking soda if you remember i have explained baking soda also and what is vinegar also we have seen the reaction uh, of how magnesium burns in air with a white dazzling flame uh, if you burn a magnesium uh, ribbon in uh, air it will burn with a white dazzling flame and the ashes collected in the plate uh, kept below that magnesium ribbon is actually magnesium oxide and if you dissolve that magnesium oxide into water or if you, or if you allow magnesium oxide to react with water it will form magnesium hydroxide which is which is basic, basic in nature basic in nature means how can you test it if you dissolve uh, if you put a red litmus paper into that magnesium hydroxide solution it will turn into blue telling us that it is basic in nature then we have seen uh, the reaction of copper sulfate solution and iron how iron displaces copper sulfate copper from copper sulfate solution and forms solid copper and a pale green green color of solution of fesf also we have talked about corrosion and rusting of iron how rusting of iron uh, should be prevented and what is rust that is reddish brown color compound called fe2o3 and actually iron before getting corroded or rusted its color was uh, gray black we have also seen uh, the different ways of preventing rusting uh, that is uh, application of paint application of grease over that iron uh, block or material and also galvanization that is coating of a less reactive or low reactive metal over the iron now to summarize in this chapter we have seen physical change now what is a physical change when physical properties or the properties of a substance remain same it does not changes then it is called physical change no new substance are formed then also it is called physical change and most of the physical changes are reversible okay we have talked about chemical changes when the properties of a substance changes then that change is called as chemical change new substances are formed in case of physical change no new substances were formed but in chemical change new substances are formed one or more but new substances are formed most of the chemical changes are irreversible there are few uh, chemical changes which are reversible and even if you want to reverse the chemical change it cannot be done with physical means correct what is the chemical reaction how to check whether the chemical reaction is occurring or not we have seen that also that is uh, change in color change in state change in temperature evolution of gas or not so we have seen these many things in this chapter we started with change physical change or chemical change physical change can never be chemical change chemical change can be may be or may not be a physical change then we have seen different type of properties physical properties also chemical properties also internal properties are called chemical properties shape size state are called physical properties and then we have gone to the actual scientific meaning of physical change and chemical change and also we have gone through different reaction in this chapter also now we will see some examples from the textbook itself and uh, uh, you know try to understand how uh, the answers of Uh, those questions can be achieved or can be done now the first question is classify the changes in following processes as a physical change or chemical change you can see there are different questions different uh, processes the first one is photosynthesis uh, now let us talk about photosynthesis first what is photosynthesis photosynthesis is actually you have read and you have heard also that is done by plants and also some organisms where uh, you know they convert light energy to some chemical energy uh, used as uh, energy in a body for example if you talk about photosynthesis in plants they use carbon dioxide and water in presence of sunlight to form glucose and release oxygen you can see the reaction over here uh, carbon dioxide uh, reacting with water in presence of 
uh, light energy, sunlight energy to form sugar that is glucose C6H2O6 and release oxygen. Now, what do you think? What type of change is this? I mean, is it a physical change or a chemical change? Certainly, you can see this is a chemical change where uh, two reacting species uh, in presence of sunlight, uh, the reacting species are carbon dioxide and water, are combining to form glucose C6H2O6 and releasing oxygen. So, the first uh, question, the first part of this question, whether the photosynthesis is a physical change or a chemical change, the answer is photosynthesis is a chemical change. Now, seeing the second part of this question uh, is dissolving sugar uh, into water. Now, you, you see, uh, if you dissolve sugar into water, it forms a solution. Uh, it may be a saturated solution, it may be unsaturated solution, but what happening is sugar in solid form is being converted now into a uh, vanished liquid form to form a solution. Sugar being dissolved in water to form a solution. So basically you have changed the state of sugar from solid to liquid form which means change of state is actually a physical change. So dissolution of or dissolving of sugar in water, the process is called as dissolution, that's why I will use the word dissolution. Dissolving of sugar in water is actually a physical change. Now third part of this question is burning of coal. See, uh, we have seen this example earlier also in chemical change if you remember. If you burn coal, for example, coke is a uh, type of coal uh, represented by C. If you burn coal uh, in presence of oxygen, excess supply of oxygen, we have also seen what happens when we burn uh, coal in excess supply of oxygen and limited supply of oxygen. Let's talk about excess supply of oxygen. If you burn coal in excess supply of oxygen or ex excess supply of air, then carbon dioxide is formed and left behind is ash, ash of that particular coal. So can you combine that ash and carbon dioxide to form coal back again? The answer is no. This process is a chemical change. The coal is being burned in presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and also releasing energy and left behind are ashes of coal. This process is a chemical change and also irreversible. You cannot reverse the process. Now, seeing uh, the next part of this question, that is melting of wax. You remember I have talked about burning of uh, wax and melting of wax. This question is melting of wax. Burning of wax is actually a chemical process or chemical change, but melting of wax is actually a physical change. How? If you melt a certain amount of wax, it can again solidify when the temperature goes down. If you melt wax, it will be converted into liquid form. But as you uh, cool it down, it will again solidify to form that solid wax. Which means melting of wax is actually a physical change because the properties are not changing. The state was changing solid to liquid form and again if you cool it, it will form a solid wax which is uh, the same wax uh, as it was earlier. So the answer of this question is physical change. Now if you see the next part of this question it is beating aluminium to form aluminium foil. You might have seen if you uh, travel around you can see you know in shops people hammering different metals to form metal foils or sheets of metal. Now in that case you might be converting the shape and size of that metal into different shape and size. I mean if you uh, beat a metal like aluminum in this case, the thickness of aluminum of, of that metal will go down and it will form thin sheets. But in thin sheet also that is also aluminum and earlier when it was thick it is also aluminum. So beating aluminum to form aluminum foil is actually physical change. Correct? Now, Moving further, if you talk about digestion of food, which is your uh, last part of this question, digestion of food. Now, let us understand what, what is digestion of food. Basically, digestion of food is breaking off larger food particles which we eat into water soluble particles. And this is a catabolism. Now, breaking of larger food particles into water soluble smaller particles is actually a chemical change. You cannot reverse the process once once the digestion of food has been done so digestion of food which is a form of catabolism uh, which means breaking of 
larger food particles into water soluble smaller particles is actually a chemical change now moving further to the second question the second question is state whether the following statements are true or false in case the statement is false write the correct statement in your notebook the first part of this question is cutting a cutting a log of wood into pieces is a chemical change what do you think is this a chemical change or a physical change the answer is if you cut a log of wood into pieces you are changing shape and size of the wood but the properties remain same the, those smaller uh, pieces of wood are also wood that particular uh, log was also wood you have just changed the shape and size of the larger form of wood into smaller form of smaller pieces of woods so basically it is a physical change so you can write the correct statement as uh, cutting off a uh, log of wood into smaller pieces is basically a physical change since the properties remain same and do not changes correct the second part of this question is formation of a manure of leaves is a physical change now let us understand what is manure of leaves first you know application of green leaves and twigs of trees shrubs and herbs collected from elsewhere is actually green leaf manuring you know why it is done why manuring of leaves is done manuring of leaves is done to increase the soil structure it is also done to you know increase the water holding capacity and also to prevent uh, the losses of soil by erosion so you can understand by you know uh, the meaning of manuring of leaves it is not a physical change but it should be a chemical change because you are changing the properties of leaves by manuring and it should be a chemical change so the answer of second part of this question is manuring of leaves is actually a chemical change correct now if you see the third part of the question the question is iron pipes when coated with zinc do not get rusted easily you know uh, in this chapter we have already seen uh, you to prevent uh, rusting of iron you have a process called galvanizing and what is galvanizing when you coat a more reactive uh, metal with a less reactive metal then the less reactive metal or that metal having low reactivity do not allow the high reactive metal to come in contact with uh, you know oxygen or humid environment to get corroded or rusted since iron is more reactive iron pipes will be more reactive and since iron is reactive when it will come into contact with oxygen it will form iron oxide easily and since zinc is less reactive or having low reactivity than iron when it will be coated above iron pipes when it will be coated above iron pipes then it will not allow the iron pipes to come in contact with oxygen or moisture present in the environment and will prevent iron pipes to get rusted easily so uh, the answer of this question is iron pipes do not get rusted easily when coated with zinc it is true correct the statement is true no more spending your energy and money on coaching classes or missing classes for rain for rally and any other nonsense subjects covered by multiple teachers with repeat telecast doubts concepts applications no problem all explained through great and significant animation so sit back comfortably in your home and watch study spectrum tv channel that condensation of steam is not a chemical change now if you remember in this chapter we have seen the examples of physical change where we saw vaporization and condens uh, condensation also condensation is actually formation of liquid back again from the vapors for example if you try to cool down the water vapors it will form uh, liquid water so condens in condensation actually what we are seeing that state is changing vapors vapors are being converted into liquid form gaseous state being converted into liquid form you are only changing the state earlier also it was wa uh, water and now also it is water so by changing the state you are not changing the properties of that substance so condensation of steam 
is not a chemical change and the answer is it is a true statement so uh, in this question we have seen uh, true or false statements we have seen the first example was uh, cutting of a log of uh, wood into pieces uh, is actually a physical change but not chemical change uh, the answer was uh, false because it was given cutting a piece of log cutting a log of wood into pieces is a chemical change the answer was false it is a physical change the second example the second uh, part of this question we saw formation of a manure of leaves is a physical change but actually the statement is false formation of manure of leaves is actually a chemical change correct the third part of the question was iron pipes when coated with zinc do not get rusted easily the answer is true the iron pipes when coated with zinc zinc is a less reactive metal so iron pipes when coated with zinc do not get rusted easily the statement is true fourth part of this question is iron and rust are uh, the same substances but we have seen iron is a metal whereas rust is a metal oxide iron gray black color substance gray black metal when comes into contact with oxygen it forms a reddish brown substance called as iron oxide fe2o3 and both are not same substances so the statement is false and i have just mentioned the true statement iron and rust are not the same substances and the last part of this question was condensation of steam is not a chemical change and the statement is true why it is not a chemical change it is a physical change because condensation of water is condensation of steam to form water is actually a physical change where state of water from gaseous to liquid is being seen in condensation of steam to form water so moving further we'll see the third question of this chapter and the question is fill the blanks in the following statements the first part of this question is when carbon dioxide is passed in lime water it turns milky due to the formation of dash dash is given empty uh, line is given the answer of this question is uh, we have learned this also earlier uh, while we have seen uh, the reaction of vinegar and baking soda when lime uh, when carbon dioxide is passed through lime water it turns milky due to the formation of calcium carbonate how lime is calcium oxide when it reacts with CO2 which is passed through it that lime water then calcium carbonate is formed calcium carbonate is white ppt in color white precipitate in color white solid in color so when when carbon dioxide is passed through lime water it turns milky due to the formation of calcium carbonate if you remember i have also uh, told you i have also explained you that it is a specific test for checking whether the gas evolved is carbon dioxide or not now the second question is the chemical name of baking soda is if you remember we have already learned we have already seen in this chapter what is baking soda and what are the different uses and aspects of baking soda so the chemical name of baking soda is sodium hydrogen carbonate nahco3 sodium hydrogen carbonate betterly known as sodium bicarbonate so you can write the answer of this question as the chemical name of baking soda is sodium hydrogen carbonate now if you see the third part of this question the third part of this question states that two two methods for preventing the rusting of iron are we have seen what is rusting of iron and how to prevent rusting of iron we have seen different ways of uh, preventing rusting of iron also so the third part of this question is two methods for preventing the rusting of iron are dash and dash what are you going to write on the two dashes two methods of preventing rusting of iron are painting and galvanizing if you remember painting i have explained if you have see the grills of windows outside uh, your you know homes or walls that grills are being painted of different colors black sometimes yellow blue whatever the requirement is why they are painted because it will not allow the iron to come in contact with oxygen or moisture present in the environment and will prevent rusting or corrosion of iron whereas what is galvanization galvanization is coating of a less reactive metal we have seen uh, we coat zinc over iron why because zinc is less reactive than uh, iron uh, metal iron and it will prevent iron from being rusted formation of iron oxide that is reddish brown in color fe2o3 so the answer of this question i repeat again 
is two methods of preventing rusting of iron are painting and galvanization the fourth part of this question d that is the changes in which dash properties only changes of a substance are called as physical changes we have seen what are physical changes physical changes in which only shape size and state of a substance can be changed but the internal properties remain same like we have seen in the earlier question also if you cut a log of wood into pieces it was wood earlier also and now also you have just changed the physical uh, properties of that particular uh, wood uh, log you have changed the shape you have changed the size by cutting into smaller pieces but still it remains wood so internal properties are same so the answer of this question uh, the changes in which only physical properties of a substance uh, changes are called physical changes and if you see the last part of the question uh, the changes in which new substances are formed are called as dash now we have seen we have studied physical changes we have seen we have studied chemical changes we have seen in physical change new substances are not formed but in chemical change new substances are formed so in the, in the last question the answer is it is called as chemical change why because new substance is being formed so we have seen all the five parts of this question and we have uh, filled the blanks also in the statements uh, of the uh, mentioned five